Trophy once again to Coach Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Welcome to Cover 4. Today we are covering the back-to-back two-time national champions of this whole college football, kind of the kings of this world, let's be honest. Uh, The University of Georgia, we're going to go over their 2023 season. Of course, they lose a lot of players, such as their, you know, walk-on, but star quarterback, Stetson Bennett. He's now with the Rams, looking better than every other rookie he's ever looked in week one. But we have to move forward as Georgia fans. And we're moving forward with Carson Beck. It hasn't been announced yet as as of this, you know, the date of this video coming out, but it, it's pretty clear. I went to the G-Day game. He outshone Gunner and Brock. He's got to be the guy. The real question at quarterbacks is who's going to be number two. Is it Gunner? Is it Brock? And then move over for next year. Dylan Rowell comes in. We'll, we'll get into all that. Anyway, they lose Stetson Bennett. They lose good defenders such as Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, they, they lost a couple key players in the transfer portal, like A.D. Mitchell. But, all in all, didn't lose much. They still returned the GOAT of college football as of this year. In my opinion, I'm wearing his jersey, Brock Bowers. The greatest tight end Georgia's ever had and probably the number one tight end in the league. They have tons of wide receiver talent as far as Arian Smith, Rosemary Jack Saint, they bring in two transfer portal monsters. Mississippi State's number one receiver from last year, Ra Ra Thomas, and Dominic Lovett, the guy who led Missouri in passing yards last year. It was in the top five of all receiving yards in the SEC. Defense, you're going to see some familiar faces. you still got Malachi Starks, who might be my favorite player on defense. Williams is coming back. Nazir Stackhouse is stepping up at nose guard to replace the quitter, Bear Alexander who went to USC, he'll never see a playoff. Um, But they have a lot of talent still coming back. There are some new faces, and we're going to get into that. We're also going to get into the schedule, players I'm going to be looking out for, teams that I think is going to make a good impact against Georgia this year on the schedule, and where we go from there. So starting with the players returning. Like I said, we named all the tight ends. Oh, no, we didn't. We still got Oscar Delp. We got Lucky, who was a five-star tight end, who's going to be a third string. Georgia's slowly becoming tight end university. Running backs, Kenny returns. Branson Robinson returns. Dejan returns. Cash Jones might be the best player in the first three weeks. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but Kenny, Branson, they're all a little banged up. I don't know what exactly that says because – This is Branson Robinson. Him banged up as just being a normal human, let's be honest. Defense, still loaded. Let's get into this actual schedule, though, because I want to show you guys something, and then let's let's talk about this a little bit. So here's the schedule as it sits right now. You got UT Martin, Ball State, South Carolina, UAB, Auburn, Kentucky, Vandy, bye week, of course, always before the cocktail party. Uh, Florida, Missouri, Old Miss, at Tennessee, at Georgia Tech. There has been a lot of people bashing this schedule. It's an easy schedule. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. It's an easy schedule. The one thing I will say is, whose fault is it that it's an easy schedule? It's not Georgia's fault. Let me break this down for you guys. We can't control that the rest of the SEC East is a bunch of trash cans. We can't control that. Our um, SEC West opponents, they're always in rotation. We always have Auburn. Once again, can't control that they fell off. And we have Ole Miss. It was their turn to come up. Next year, we know that schedule. The only thing Georgia can control is out of conference, which we have UT Martin, Ball State. How many of y'all know that, that UT Martin was supposed to be Oklahoma? But the SEC put a kaput to it. And, yes, it's because they're coming to the SEC and people are upset because, well, Texas and Bama still play. That got done before the signing of the papers. So SEC said no. That being said, where can you fault Georgia on this schedule? It's not our fault that 
South Carolina is South Carolina. Florida used to be a great team. Right now, they're the bottom of a gooch. Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, that's their own fault. Auburn, hopefully Hugh Freeze picks it up a little bit because we do want to have some good competition here. This is the same thing people were saying about Bama like four or five years back. That schedule was a little – I mean, yeah, it's still the SEC West, but it's cupcakes for Bama. That's because of how Bama's playing. It's the same situation as Georgia. If you would have gave this schedule right here to, God, let's say Oregon. That's a tough schedule for Oregon. Yeah, no shit. The problem is, is you, you compare it to the good teams. It's not the good team's fault that we're having to do this. Yes, Bama has Texas. We were supposed to have Oklahoma. That's just how it is. Enough of the bullshit talk. Let's get into the actual schedule. We start out with UT Martin. I mean, come on, win. I actually have a problem with this game, too. That's a night game. Why are we wasting our night game on UT Martin? I get it, the schedule's the schedule, but come the fuck. Oh, wake the fuck up. We don't need a night game and a light show for that damn game. Watch your profanity. There's a win. Ball State. Come on. Win. Then we finally get some SEC play. At home, South Carolina. A lot of talk on South Carolina and what Spencer Rattler can do. And look how good Beamer had them looking when they played Tennessee. They hung half a hundred on Tennessee. I don't give a shit. It's still South Carolina. It's still Spencer Rattler. To me, that's a win. And good luck when you play Tennessee. UAB win. First road game, and it's SEC opponent. It's Deep South's oldest rivalry. We go to Auburn. This is going to be not a tricky game, but kind of a wake up and pay attention kind of game. Hugh Freeze is going to show the world that he can still coach in this game. He's going to do it when he does the Iron Bowl. He's going to do it against Georgia. He's going to try to make statements. I still think Georgia gets it done, but I don't think it's a blowout. Kentucky, win, blowout. I don't give a shit if people have Kentucky at fourth overall. We own Kentucky. We're not Tennessee. We're not Florida. We don't have problems with Kentucky. Vanderbilt, win. I don't care if it's at Vanderbilt. It could be inside the Vanderbilt University. We're winning that game. Then we got the cocktail party. You remember what I said about Tennessee and Florida always have problems with Kentucky? Florida is our Kentucky. That rivalry game, it, it's, oh, God. I go to it as much as I can, and it still gives me headaches. It makes me queasy every time. We should win. Kirby refuses to lose to Florida. I'm calling a win here, but I'll never bet on this game. November 4th, come back home, we got Missouri. Oh. All right, Missouri, I'm going to break this down for y'all right now. If there's any Tiger fans watching this, do not turn in. Do not tune into this game. We are going to beat the ever-loving shit out of you. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. <laughs> y'all have made it to where everybody, when they look at last year, go, oh, what about that Missouri game? They slept through three quarters is what Georgia did. We're not going to sleep on you this year. This year, we're going to put it on you. We, we might beat you worse than, than TCU. It's going to be bad. After that, our two hardest games, in my opinion. Old Miss comes to town. I know I'm pausing a little bit here. Georgia has the type of defense to really stop Old Miss. Right, Ole Miss has problems with Georgias and Bamas. If you have good cornerback and, and free safety play, it kind of shuts Lane Kiffin out. I'm kind of leaning that and hoping that's what happens here because if not, we might be in a shootout and then we, we're really going to get tested with Carson Beck. Then it's the game everybody's talking about, right? Georgia has to go to kneeling and, and we're going to tear down another, you know, goalpost. Look. I know Carter's all hyped up and he made his video. Just because he's walking around looking like Chester Cheetah's nutsack does not mean this guy's going to be right on any of these games. Georgia is going to beat Tennessee. Last year's Tennessee is better than this year's Tennessee. That's just plain and simple. Georgia made Hooker 
their bench. It wasn't even close. That man was on his ground more than any other hooker, or on his back more than any hooker I've ever seen in Atlanta. It was sad. It's just going to be worse this time. We, matter of fact, we're naming it Athens North. That's it. It's done. Then we got little brother Georgia Tech. Let's be honest. Win. I, I think it's 12-0. and 0. I'm not even trolling. And, and, guys, like we said before, it's an easy schedule. Not Georgia's fault. That's just the way it is. I'm going 12-0, and 0, possibly 11-1 and 1 with a loss to either Ole Miss or Auburn. I'm not putting Tennessee as the possible. Georgia wakes up for these kind of games. Ugh, Jordan Hare. I'm going to say if we lose a game, September 30th at Auburn. One, it's a away game, and two, this will be the first time that Carson's had to travel outside of Athens to play an SEC opponent. So, worst case, 11-1, best case, 12-0. We'll probably end up seeing Bama in the championship because, just like Haas said, I, I really am losing all faith in NLSU. Um, yeah, I think Georgia finishes first, Tennessee second. South Carolina might finish third, though. Because they might run through everybody except Georgia and Tennessee. Um, but, yeah, that, that's pretty much my breakdown for this schedule. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We are slowly building this channel. We're trying to have fun. College football is right around the corner. I think week zero is less than two weeks away now, which is batshit crazy. And tell me, guys, what you think. What do you think Georgia's record is going to be? Do y'all disagree with why I said it's an easy schedule? Do y'all disagree that I don't think it's Georgia's fault? I mean, if Kentucky and Tennessee, let, let, let's just point this out. Kentucky, Tennessee, South Carolina. If they were playing at the level of some of these teams in the SEC West, like LSU or A&M, right? The, you wouldn't bat an eye. You'd be like, okay, regular SEC, SEC schedule. Their non-con's a little soft, but they can't control that. They had Oklahoma. The only thing we can control is how badly we've beaten these teams. And, and Kirby's got that mindset. He's not taking his foot off the pedal to make your team look better for next year. He don't give a shit. So, sorry. Um, but, yeah, I got us at 12-0. Hope you guys enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe, share this out. We're going to have fun this year. College football is right around the corner. We're going to have a great time. And be a part of the channel. See ya.